one of the fantastic things that uh, plants provide us with, of course, is the oxygen that we breathe and the food that we eat. And the main organ of the plant that does this is the leaf through the process of photosynthesis. And so here's a little introduction to the chemical process of photosynthesis. And this will be explored a bit further when you take your Biology 20 course. Uh, but the process of photosynthesis is rather interesting in that what a plant is doing is taking molecules of carbon dioxide that it obtains from the air or the atmosphere. And it combines those six carbon dioxides with six molecules of water, which it'll basically uptake through its root system. And with the presence of light energy coming from the sun, the plant is able to stitch these small molecules of CO2 and H2O into much larger molecules of glucose, which is C6H12O6. And of course, this eventually will become the food that we eat or else becomes part of the food chain. So for example, a herbivore may eat a plant and then we may eat the herbivore. And as a fringe benefit, photosynthesis also produces six molecules of oxygen or O2 that you and I inhale. So where this is done is inside of an organelle, inside of a cell called a chloroplast. Um, and if you take a little look inside of a chloroplast with a high-powered microscope, you will see that it consists of two membranes. It has an outer membrane and it has an inner membrane. And then inside of it, it has stacks of disks that are referred to as thylakoids. Uh, and they just look like stacks of uh, pennies or poker chips. And then in between them, there's an empty space called the stroma. Uh, a stack of thylakoid discs is referred to as a granum. The plural of that is, is grana. And uh, this is what it actually looks like uh, under a uh, electron microscope. And you're going to see this diagram of the chloroplast many times because it's probably one of the most famous uh, micrographs of a chloroplast in existence. Now, in order to ensure that every chloroplast inside of a plant gets its fair share of sunlight, one of the interesting things that plant cells are capable of doing is illustrated over here in this little video clip that's running. This is called cytoplasmic streaming. What's happening here is that the uh, cytoplasm of the cell is being rotated around the central vacuole or the water vacuole of the cell. And this enables each of the uh, chloroplasts to reach the top surface of the cell where it's closer to the surface of the leaf and, and get a greater exposure to sunlight. So if we look at the, uh, the equation for photosynthesis and uh, put it beside the equation for cellular respiration, we see something rather interesting. So photosynthesis, of course, is what is done by plants. Cellular respiration, of course, is what is done by animals or us, for example. If we look at this again, we see that in photosynthesis, plants take six molecules of carbon dioxide, combine them with six molecules of water. They make one molecule of glucose and six molecules of oxygen. Now, if you look at the cellular respiration equation, you should see something rather interesting. You should notice that it is, in fact, the absolute reverse of photosynthesis. What we do and what the animals do is we take those six molecules of oxygen and those molecules of glucose that we obtain by eating, and we break them down into smaller things, into six molecules of CO2 and six molecules of H2O. So plants and animals are essentially doing the opposite chemical reaction. Plants are taking small molecules and assembling them into larger ones with a fringe benefit of oxygen. We take oxygen and a large molecule of glucose, and we proceed to break it down into carbon dioxide and water. And that's how we each obtain our, our nutrients and our energy for life.